are some of the things that our moms do for us? What's some of the things moms do for us? What do moms do for us? They do. <laughs> Clean. What else they do? Take care of us. They take care of us. That's right. What else they do? It's on your head. Make your bed. Make your bed. They do make your bed. That's exactly right. <laughs> what else do they do? Moms do a whole lot of stuff, don't they? They drive you balconies. You play ball? Anybody play ball? Soccer games? Do karate. Mom drives you. Yeah, mom does a lot of driving, too. I used to do baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Which, oh, Declan, going to say something. Are you going to say something? You're thinking about it, aren't you? You're thinking about it. Well, the title of my little short lesson today is called Listen and Learn. Listen and Learn. And I love this piece of scripture. It's the only time these two dear, sweet, precious ladies are mentioned in 2 Timothy 2 and 5. Paul wrote a letter to young Timothy. And in his letter to Timothy, he talks about Timothy's mother and Timothy's grandmother. Two important ladies in our life. Well, there's something very, very special about these two ladies. They love the Lord, and they taught their children and their grandchildren about the ways of the Lord and to, and to learn to love the Lord just as they did. So the scripture says this. It says, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that this faith is also in you. So what do we discover in this verse? And I love this. These two ladies have had this great faith. What do we discover? That they taught their children about the Lord. Now what did Eunice and Timothy have in common? Now Timothy's the grandson. Eunice is the daughter, and Lois is the grandmother. They listen to their mother. <laughs> they listen to their mother. That's exactly what they did. That's the reason why I titled this Listen and Learn. Just as young Timothy listened to his mother, and just as Eunice listened to her mother, see, they listened, didn't they? They listened and they learned. And they learned by the example these two wonderful ladies learned. Learn by that example. That's how they learn. But they listened and they learned. And just as we listen and learn, you can be examples to those around you and teach them about loving the Lord and to be a good follower and to obey. And that's our lesson for today. It's listen and learn. And we're going to tell others about Jesus. Now, we're going to close with a short prayer and then we'll get our treat, okay? Does anybody want to lead us in prayer? You don't have to, Carl. It's all right. You don't have to. Okay, we're going to have a short prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for these children. We thank you for the parents, and especially today on Mother's Day, for all these wonderful mothers, dear God. All these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, guys, we'll let you get a treat. And then remember now, give your moms a big hug and your grandmamas a big hug today. Today's a special day. Definitely, we'll come get you something. You might. But remember now, listen to your moms. <laughs> and your grandmother. <laughs> I was thinking about something while we were reading the responsive reading, and it said that the mothers would rejoice in the time to come. You folks with little kids, someday you'll have things. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, Donna Jean, I'm really proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm in no hurry to believe, man. I've got all I need to eat. <laughs> the rest of you, you're on your own. I'm doing well. Thank you, Donna Jean. Thank you, Donna Jean. You're a child of the Lord. But so anyway. But hey, Mr. Dunn Jean, that was a great lesson. Yes, uh, thank you uh, for that. If you have your Bible today, I'll ask you to turn to the book of 1 Samuel. When you get to the book of 1 Samuel, you'll find chapter number 1. We're going to read the text uh, there today.
today. And uh, I was telling Karen as we were, as, as I prepared for this, I get torn on Mother's Day, Father's Day as well. Because sometimes, sometimes the young people feel like I get left out. Sometimes people who are not moms feel like I get left out. So my heart today is this, is yes, I'm going to be looking at a lady who was a mother, but I want to speak to all of you. Why not because you're special. You are uniquely created. You are uniquely gifted. And you are a gift to our country, to our churches, and to our world. And without you, Mom, we'd be in dire straits. Some of you may be sitting here today say, by the way, I'm not mom. Because I saved you that you're probably a mom to more children than you are aware of. Mm -hmm. You're impacting lives far beyond anything that you could ever imagine. So I'm going to do something a little different today. So I want all of our moms, our ladies, and our young girls to remain seated. Now, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you, if you would, would you join me in standing up? And what we're going to do is we're going to celebrate women today, period, by just giving them a round of applause and telling them how much we love them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do for us. Proverbs 31.30 says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31.28 says, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Have you ever thought about how much your mom taught you and is teaching you as you grow up? My mother taught me a lot of things. See, she taught me about medicine. And she used to tell me when I tried to cross my eyes, she'd say, if you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to get stuck that way. She taught me about genetics, and she said, you're just like your father. <laughs> she taught me about my roots. She said, you must have been born in a barn. <laughs> she taught me about anticipation with these words I love to hear. Just wait till your daddy gets home. <laughs> she taught me about religion. You better pray that I come out of that carpet. <laughs> and the one thing that my mother taught me was about justice. And she said, one of these days, you're going to be blessed with children. And I hope they all turn out just like you. <laughs> I was blessed with children. And the great thing about it is they turned out more like their mom than they did me. And I'm thankful to God for that because she is a godly mother. <coughs> Mother's Day was started by a lady by the name of Ann Jarvis. She started in 1908 simply wanting to honor her mother. In 1914 it became an official holiday. What many of us don't realize is that Ann Jarvis spent the remainder of her life trying to get Mother's Day removed from the calendar. Did y'all know that? <coughs> she did because she felt like Her gesture of wanting to honor her mother had become politicized and commercialized and had lost the significance of what she really wanted. And so she spent the remainder of her life trying to get it taken off of the calendar. I'm not in favor of removing Mother's Day because I think it's special when we take this one day to say thank you to our mothers, to celebrate them. Well, let me encourage you, don't just wait till one day a year to tell your mother how much you love her, how special she is to you. You know, it was great to hear the little boys up here, you know, we all knew the answers. She cooks, we'd all be in bad shape if she didn't, wouldn't we? She makes up our bed, she does all these things for us. But her work goes far, far deeper than that. Can I tell you, and this is just for free before we get the message. But can I tell you, 
that your mother probably has spent hours upon end praying for you. Praying for your salvation. Mm -hmm. When you were out and she didn't know exactly where you were, she was praying that you'd be safe and that you'd get home safe and sound. Mm -hmm. She has wept for you. Why? Because she loves you and she cares for you. And so today, I want us to understand something. That womanhood is not just about marriage and children. Your worth goes far beyond your marital status or whether or not you have children. You are God's gift. You are God's creation. And you are to be celebrated. Amen. Women, ladies, young ladies, be proud of who you are. And never apologize for being the lady that God has created you to be. Amen. Today we're going to look at a lady by the name of Hannah. It's out of the book of 1 Samuel. I'm going to read chapter 1, but I would ask you to keep your Bible open because we're going to also probably look at uh, chapter uh, 2 there as well. So if you would, would you stand if your help will allow you? Would you stand with me out of reverence for uh, the reading of God's uh, holy word today? Now there was a certain man from Ramathaim Zophim from the hill country of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah. Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penna. And Penna uh, had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man would go up from uh, his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord host in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests to the Lord there. And when the day came that Elkanah uh, sacrificed, he would give portions to Penna, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters. But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival, however, would provoke her bitterly to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. It happened year after year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, uh, she would provoke her. So she wept and would not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep and why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Guys, can I just tell y'all something? That's something you should never say to your wife. Okay? Amen. Then Hannah rose after eating and um, drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She greatly uh, distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and the razor shall never come on his head. Now it came about as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli was watching her mouth. As for Hannah, she was speaking in her heart, only her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. So Eli thought that she was drunk. Then Eli said to her, How long will you make yourself drunk? Put away your wine from you. But Hannah replied and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of prayer. Uh, in spirit, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant as a worthless woman, for I have spoken until now uh, out of my great concern and provocation. The, then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant your petition that you have asked him. She said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went away and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they arose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned again to their house in Ramah. Then Elkanah had relations with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And it came about in due time after Hannah had conceived that she gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Then the man Elkanah went up with all his household to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned, then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and stay there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Remain until you have weaned him, only may the Lord confirm his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. 
Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, while with a three-year-old bull, and one ephah of flour, and a jug of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, although the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and brought the boy to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, pray to the Lord for this boy I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I ask of him. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he is dedicated to the Lord, and he worshiped the Thank Lord there. Father, we just ask you right now, God, your blessings upon the reading of your word. And Father, as your servant stands today, God, to preach, I just ask you, God, to give clarity of mind, thought, and spirit. And God, would you just speak to your servant today. Father, I know that I am not worthy to stand in your pulpit and preach your word. And I know that, God, I have not one word that I'm going to say that's going to change a life here today. If there's anything that's going to be changed, Father, it's going to be because, God, you do it. And I just ask that, God, that you just, the Lord, speak through your servant today to your people's hearts. God, let your people be encouraged is our prayer that we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people join and say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you turn in your Bible to the book of Judges, to the last chapter, the last verse. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, uh, Ruth is not between Judges and 1 Samuel. Actually, it's the, the book of uh, 2 Samuel, and then, I'm sorry, the book of Judges, and then you go right into 1 Samuel. If you go back to the book of Judges and you read the last verse there, here's what it says right here. It says there that everyone, or in those days, there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In that day and time, in the time of the judges, what would happen is the people would sin, they would go into captivity, they would repent, God would hear and send a deliverer, and as long as the judge lived, the people did well. As soon as the judge died, guess what happened? The people began to sin again. God would send an oppressor. They would then begin to cry out and repent. God would send another judge. They would be delivered, and this cycle would go on and on and on. And so as you come down to the book of 1 Samuel, what you're finding is this, the nation of Israel is in a sad state. Reminds us of our own country in a lot of ways today as to what they were facing. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And so here we are in this book now. We're introduced to a young lady by the name of Hannah. She has no children. And in those days, not to have a child was considered, considered to be a curse from God. And so she has this issue right here. And as we look at this today, I'd like for us to look at about four or five things that time will allow us today that I want to talk to you about. But it only not only goes to mothers, it goes to all women right here. Women of faith exhibit real problems. If you go back and read verses 1 through 8 right here, what we see is she has a real issue. And that is that she is barren. Her husband has two wives, Hannah and Penna. Now, Penna had been blessed to be able to have children. And as you can imagine, there's competition there, there's envy there, as Penna was often ridiculing Hannah, talking about how that she was able to have children. And Hannah was shamed, she was disgraced, uh, she was looked down upon in that culture because she had no children right there. She was disgraced uh, through all of this. Now, because she was, uh, because uh, Elkanah probably married her first, and she was unable to have children. What happened was he then married Penna so that he could have children right here. Now, even though this whole situation was devastated, we see that Elkanah was a godly man because even though this whole nation was headed south spiritually, this man each year would make a 20 mile journey from his home back to Jerusalem so that he could worship there. And so as he was there, they were worshiping the Bible says that he loved her, that his heart was totally devoted to her. Now, he would give a portion to uh, Penna, to her children, but to Hannah, the Bible says that he gave to her a double portion. Why? Because he loved her. And you know what? As much as Elkanah tried, he could never, ever understood the pain that Hannah was going through. And I said earlier, when he looked at her and he said, am I not better to you than ten sons? My friends, he never understood the depth 
of Hannah's pain, of Hannah's agony, the, the stuff that she was going through every day. And he was wanting to be a good husband. He was wanting to be all that he could be. He just never could understand the pain that she was going through. Sometimes, sometimes we hurt those that we love the most mm -hmm. with words that we speak, with never fully understanding the pain and the hurt that they're dealing with. And that's exactly what he did. And he said, am I not hurt better than you than ten sons? And you know, the Bible says to us right there that the hardest part of her not having children was the fact that Penna always made fun of her. But matter of fact, the Bible says that, the, that her rival used to provoke her grievously to irritate her. And that word provoke literally means to cause her to thunder. What she wanted to do was just irritate her to the point that she would literally, as we would refer to today, to blow her top. She was continually irritating her right here. And that word irritate refers to being stirred up inwardly. It bothered Hannah so much that she could not even eat. And she wept bitterly. Can you imagine the pain that she must have felt? But there's something that I want everybody to notice here. Don't miss this. The Bible said it was the Lord that had closed her womb. Y'all understand what this is? Her situation was caused by the Lord. Now, why? That I don't know. But sometimes we want to blame Satan for our issues when really it's God that has allowed things to come out of the way. You see, He is sovereign. And God knows exactly what He's doing. Amen. Hannah wanted his son more than she wanted anything in the world. And God at this particular time had simply said no. You see, women of faith have real problems too. I would imagine it would be safe to say that probably every one of you sitting here today are dealing with an issue and no one outside of you may know what it is that you have. But you know what Hannah did? She faced it in faith. <coughs> Hannah had to settle this issue. And that is that God is sovereign in every situation. Mm -hmm. Someone put it this way. In every situation, God is always doing a thousand different things that you cannot see and that you do not know. She had a real problem. But the second thing I want you to notice is this, is that women of faith express vibrant <coughs> prayers. You know what she did? Instead of talking about it, instead of complaining about it, Instead of lashing out of God, you know what she began to do? She just began to pray. They're up here, they're worshiping, they go to eat, and her heart is so heavy, so broken. She's weeping bitterly so bad that she cannot even eat. And so what does she do? She goes to the altar and she begins to pray. There's a lesson in this for all of us, not just the women, but the men as well. And that is this, our problems should drive us to pray. Amen. You see, God's the only one that can fix your situation. And that's exactly what she knew, and that's what she did. She went down, and she began to pray. Psalm 1971 says, It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your decrees. And she goes to the Lord, and she begins to pray. This is what she prays to in verses 10 and 11. She was so deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. Her prayers, her tears, 
led her to worship. My friends, listen, that's what you call real prayer. Right. Have you ever been so broken that you just literally wept before the Lord? Yes. Have you ever just, just came on your face before God weeping so hard and not and sometimes not even able to voice what's on your heart because you have been broken. As I look at this kind of prayer, it reminds me how often the prayers that I pray are so feeble. Mm -hmm. This was a woman that was broken. Her tears came from her heart. God breaks us, and I love what Adam Grant has said. He said, when God has an impossible task, he takes an impossible person and crushes him or her. Chuck yeah. Swindoll adds this, this is how God often deals with strong wills and stubborn people. He has to sometimes break us, and he did right here. She's broken, and she's crying out. And I love it as she cries out to the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies. And here's what she realizes. She realizes that only God could fix her situation. You ever faced a situation when you knew that if God didn't show up and if God didn't fix it, it wasn't going to get fixed? That's exactly where she is right here. She knows, God, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Do you realize that Anna is the only woman in the Old Testament that makes a vow to God and keeps it? Here's a vow. God, if you give me a son, now I can't stress this enough, so, so please just, just bear with me right here. This woman has longed for a son. She has prayed for a son. And here's what she said. God, if you will give me a son, God, here's what I'm going to do. God, I'm going to be so grateful to you that, God, I'm going to give him right back to you. I'm going to take him after I wean him, and, God, I'm going to take him to the temple, and, God, I'm going to let him serve you all the days of his life. Can you imagine what a sacrifice that had to be for her? To beg and plead God for a child, then to simply say, I'm going to give him back to you. As I pastored in the different churches throughout my lifetime, there was never a greater occasion when a, parent, when a couple had a baby and we could set aside a time of dedication. And I stress that that child, and I'll say this again, that child is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm not so spiritual, but y'all just hang with me sometimes because you don't probably feel the same way. I love my children, but there's times I could have run their necks. <laughs> y'all ever felt that way? <laughs> you could. But here's what I realized they're God's gift to me. Mm -hmm. And I was responsible, along with my wife, for bringing them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And even though they sometimes would do things that I was not always proud of, there was never a time when I ever stopped loving them. And I can't imagine what Hannah must have felt like knowing that she was praying for this son, knowing that God, if you would just give me this son, God, I'm going to give him back. If you don't carry anything else away from here, carry this way. Your children are on loan to you from God. And it's our job to parent, to shepherd, and to train them to do the Lord's work. Amen. Your children are on loan to you from God. And you are to train them, you are to shepherd them, and you are to parent them to become servants of God. The third thing.
believe that I want you to notice is this, that she experienced God's provision. She's praying. It shows you how sad the situation in Israel that day was. Eli was sitting there and he was watching her. And it must have not have been uncommon for people to have been drinking to come to the altar and pray as he's sitting there, as she is praying, she's not praying uh, audibly, she's just praying within her spirit and her lips are moving and Eli looks down at her and he begins to think that she's drinking. And he begins to chastise her. She said, I'm not, I'm not drinking. I'm just heartbroken. And I'm praying. I'm asking God for a gift. And I love it when the Bible says, and the Lord remember her. The prayers that she prayed, God heard. And he gifted her with a child. And she conceived and she named him Samuel. And his name sounds like the Hebrew word for heard of God. Could you imagine that every time she looked at Samuel, every time she called his name, she had to remember that she had been heard of God. But can I just pause for just a moment to just simply say something? This verse teaches me something. And that is that life is special. Yeah. Not just the preborn, but all life. Right. And I think Tomorrow's Hope and the other pregnancy agencies across our land that are doing all they can for the sanctity of life. And I pray that this church will continue to stand with them and other organizations to help preserve life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter the color of a person's skin. It doesn't matter the age of an individual. To me, God created all life. Therefore, all life is valuable. Right. But let me Amen. tell you something. When Christ died, Christ died for all humanity. Right. Amen. And because Christ died for all humanity, my friends, listen, we should make sure that we stand with him in preserving the sanctity of human life. Amen. But let me be careful. I want to say something to you. Everybody look up here at me and listen. Because I don't want you to go away there hearing something that Brother Larry didn't say. Just because Hannah got what she asked for doesn't mean that you'll always get what you asked for. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because God knows what you need. And God loves to give good gifts. And he will give you what you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. God just happened to give Hannah the gift that she asked for. Mm -hmm. So let me encourage you. If you're facing something tough, take it to the Lord in prayer. And then the Bible says that when he was winged, she took him up to the temple. She kept her promise. She kept him until he was probably around three years old. And then she took him up. And he spent all the days of his life there in the temple. Verse 28 says, Therefore I have led him to the Lord as long as he lives. He is lent to the Lord. I listened to Janet Pascal, uh, a partial, recently. And she said this about Hannah. She said every time she felt Samuel kicking in her stomach, every time he moved right under her heart, Every jab in her ribs, she was reminded to say, Yes, Lord, he is yours. Yes, Lord, he is yours. Mm -hmm. Have you given your children to the Lord? They're his. He just gave them to you for a little while. And let me just remind you of this. Because Hannah had already settled the submission issue, she was able to settle the promise that she had made. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that I want to tell you this morning, we're going to close. 
is women of faith explode praise. I didn't read it this afternoon. You may want to go home and read verses 1 through 10 out of chapter number 10 right there. As you read her praise, there's no element of sadness here. She knew exactly where her son was. And here's what she knew that was most important. She knew that she was going to be the parent of a prophet. What greater gift than having a son given to you that you gave back to God that would be a prophet to the nation. But here's what also he did. It was he who anointed the first two kings of Israel. He was not only a prophet, he was also a king maker. Well, what a gift. And she understood this and she praised God. Guys, here's what I want to something else I want you to get. You know, when my grandson, when my children was born, my grandson was born, you know, I had the pictures on my phone or back in the old days, we just used to keep them in the wallet. Y'all remember those days? You know, what we always do, we'd always walk around, we'd pull our wallet out and say, you want to see my baby? It doesn't matter whether they did or not, they're about to see them, right? right. We're going to show them. Why? Because they're our babies. We wanted them to see how handsome they are. When my grandson was born, I showed his picture to everybody. I just kept it up on my screenshot. I just showed everybody. That's my grandbaby. And you know what I found out about grandparents? Grandparents always think they got the, the prettiest grandbaby in the world. That's right. Amen. That's right. Y'all probably got some cute ones. But mine takes the cake. <laughs> but we did this. And I'll tell you all that's to you this. Do you... As you read this, there's something that you noticed. Never once, never once, did she say, thank you, God, for how handsome he is. Never once did she say, thank you, that he's healthy. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even about him at all. Read it for yourself. You know what she did? She praised the giver. Oh, this is just the stuff that I'm excited. <clears throat> She praised the giver more so than the gift because the giver was worthy of the praise. Right. You see, every good and perfect gift that you have comes from the giver. Amen. You know what? We should never, ever place more emphasis on the gift than the giver. Right. Amen. And what she did was she praised God. Mm -hmm. And God, you gave me a son. God, I gave him back to you. And I can just imagine that she must have just been filled with tears and joy and praise as she watched her son grow up, become a servant of God, and she watched how that he was a prophet to the nation and how also he was able to anoint first two kings of Israel. If anybody had a right to say, that's my boy. Would you agree that she did? Yes. That's my boy. But I want to close up with some, just some summary points right here. Because I want to speak to all of you today right here. Whether you have a child or not, whether you're married or not, I want you to know something. You are of great worth in God's sight. That's all. Amen. You never let any, anyone, ladies, talk down to you. You never, ever let anyone cheapen you. You remember who you are. And you say, I am a child of the king. Right. I'm the king's daughter. Mm -hmm. You are of great value. Mm -hmm. Celebrate your woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take just a personal moment. We may be a little bit past 12, but y'all bear with me just a minute. Let me say this. It breaks my heart when I see women being cheapened. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember who you are and realize that you are Christ. Number two, to the grandmothers. As long as God is giving you a breath, you can still have an impact. That's right. Mm -hmm. Teach your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. If you don't have any grandchildren, hey, teach somebody else's grandchildren. Right. That's what you hear. 
You have a vast wealth of knowledge. Pull it out and share it with those. All women can become spiritual mothers. That's right. I walked down to Jean up here giving the lesson a while ago. You know what you can do? My friends, listen. You may not have children of your own, but I'll tell you what. You can make an impact in the lives of others' children. That's right. That's right. Matter of fact, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that the older ought to teach the younger. Mm -hmm. Be an impactful person. If you do have children, make it your mission to give your children to the Lord for a lifetime of service. Lord, you gave them to me. God, I give them back to you. And you know what the greatest joy could be? Would be to see God take your child and God do great things with them. Mm -hmm. God do what you listen. And the last thing is this. Just like him, all of us need to be growing in our own relationship with the Lord. Amen. We can't teach others what we don't know. Amen. Grow in your relationship. Ladies, I want you to know something. God loves you. I love you. And I want you to know I am very proud of you. And I pray that God will use you in a mighty way. And never forget who is you are. And when you walk out of here today, I pray that you walk out with this thought that I am a child of the kings. He loves me. I am highly valued. Because of who he has created me to be. So, I believe with all my heart that's my eyes in this room today. That God wanted to use. Will you make yourself available and say, Lord, here I am. God take me and God do with me whatever you see fit. Father, I pray today that God that your message has been preached with clarity and boldness. I pray to God that you have been honored. And the Lord today you've spoken to our hearts. And now as we enter into this time of response, Lord, if there's anybody here that needs to make a decision, Father, I just want to come and say, I just want to surrender my heart, my life, my entire being to the Lord. I don't know what he wants to do with me. I just want him to know I stand available. Maybe God, you've already speaking to somebody about a, a calling on their life. Maybe today they just like to come and just make it public and say, God's been dealing with me and I, I just want to follow him in this area. Whatever it is that God, you want to do here today. Maybe somebody just has never accepted you, Father, as their Lord and Savior. Maybe today is the day where God, they need to make that personal relationship with you. If that's the case, then God, let it be. My prayer, Father, is simply this. Whatever it is that God, you need to do here today, would it be done according to God, your will, your way, and for your glory? And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What, what number was it? Number 288.